Hello everyone, I'm so excited we have Dr. Angie Sadeghi with us who has taken Saturday to interview with me. So thank you so much, I know you're so busy. And Dr. Angie Sadeghi is a board certified gastroenterologist and an internal medicine doctor. She is an amazing fitness enthusiast and of course she's plant-based. She's been vegan since May 2014 and she is truly an inspiration of what a vegan lifestyle can do to your body. I'm so excited to have doctors like you in the world. I hope we have more of them and I'm so excited to have you here with us. Thank you, Marina. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So my first question is, tell us about your vegan story. How did you turn vegan? What inspired you and all of that? Right. So actually, to be honest with you, um, even though I was a doctor, um, I did not know the health benefits of veganism because we're not taught nutrition in medical school. And I actually did it purely for moral reasons initially. Um, I couldn't see myself killing an animal or paying someone else to kill the animal for me. So I decided about 15 years ago that I wasn't going to eat meat. About five years ago, actually May of uh, 2014, I was talking to my cousin who's a vegan and she opened my eyes to the cruelties that um, go on in the dairy industry. And I, uh, she opened my eyes to it and I decided, well, I wasn't going to eat dairy either. Um, but she also um, changed my life entirely because she said, you know, as a physician, I think you should go home and watch Forks Over Knives. You would love it. So I went home that night and I watched Forks Over Knives and it opened my eyes to the health benefits of veganism and how I could be uh, such a positive influence in the realm of um, medicine and, and influencing my patients to reverse disease and prevent disease by eating a plant-based diet and how beneficial it was as far as health benefits. So I really started studying nutrition and familiarizing myself with the data that was already out, out there I just didn't know about and how eating a vegan or a whole food plant-based diet could be beneficial. So then I started incorporating it into my practice about a year later once I studied it and I felt comfortable talking about it. Um, and that has changed my life. My whole entire um, way of treating my patients has changed. Instead of a, a, one of those typical people who just tries to band-aid treat patients, I have been privileged with the chance of treating my patients with nutrition to reverse their disease. So it's the best thing that could have ever happened to me. What diseases have you seen your patients reverse? Have you seen things like Crohn's actually reverse and they don't need to take any more medication or do surgeries or anything like that? I had one case. Um, this is very interesting. He actually has Crohn's disease. And uh, he decided that he was with, um, he went to UCI, University of California, Irvine, and they wanted to put him on these medicines called biologics. And the biologics are very strong medicines that um, put Crohn's into remission in combination with uh, steroids. So he was, uh, he was seen in, in, in UCI. He was put on prednisone and steroids in the IV form. And uh, he um, had some response, but then they were supposed to start him on biologics, which have a lot of side effects, and you get committed for life. He said, no, I don't want that. He said, I'm going to hold off. He came to see me. Um, he was a young uh, male patient and he said, you know, I refuse the biologics. And as a doctor, I have to follow standard of care and I have to at least give patients options. I was like, look, if you read the books, the standard of care is to start your own biologics. I think we should take the, the route of biologics and diet. He said, okay, I refuse that. I don't want to be on these medicines. So it kind of made me happy because I wasn't forcing him into it. He just chose not to follow standard of care. And he said, I want to do it with diet alone. I was like, all right, let's give it a chance. Um, and so I got him to start like, you know, just eating a whole food plant-based diet, a hundred percent whole food plant-based overnight. And of course he had um, a very strong reason to do it. So he didn't cheat. He went on a hundred percent whole food plant-based diet and um, he came back to me and his biomarkers were normal. He was feeling great. He was doing amazing. He did really, really well until um, he decided to take a trip back home to um, Korea. And he went over there and his environment changed. You know, he, he was visiting and he decided to have Korean barbecue and some other types of foods that he wasn't supposed to have on this plant-based diet. He came back with a huge flare-up 
just completely sick, bleeding, um, basically pooping blood. Um, and he lost tons of weight. He was like really, really skinny, unhealthy skinny. He was having a lot of abdominal pain, 20 bowel movements a day, joint pains, skin rash that is associated with inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease. He was doing very well. I had really bad eczema, very debilitating eczema, where my hands had these, it's pustular eczema, which is the worst form you can have, covered my body. It was, it was embarrassing. It was like, I, had a, like, I didn't want to shake people's hands because I was embarrassed by it. It looked like um, it looked like the herpes zoster infection, and then it was just basically eczema, though. And I would get flare-ups. I didn't know it was due to dairy. So my whole life, I went on taking like steroids or putting on corticosteroid creams on my hands to get rid of my eczema. And no one ever, out of all the dermatologists I saw and primary care doctors I saw growing up, no one ever told me like, well, stop eating dairy, it could be dairy. I, I went vegan for moral reasons and my eczema cleared up besides other benefits. But, but I can tell you, looking back, I'm like, why didn't they tell me? See, I won't feel bad because none of my patients can go, hey, hey, this gastroenterologist I saw 10 years ago should have told me. I did. So I want to shift a little bit and talk about, I think, your favorite topic, if I'm not mistaken, the microbiome, which I think is so, so fascinating. And it seems to me like the studies and you know the information about it is really kind of just starting, correct me if I'm wrong. So can you tell us a little bit about what, how is it related to our health? How does it impact our health? The gut microbiome is, is key. And I tell you, it's so new that back when I was doing fellowship in, at USC, um, we were still not formally taught about the gut microbiome. I don't know how heavily it's emphasized now in the curriculum. However, back when I was training in 2010, I finished my fellowship. Um, I, it was not a incorporated so much into the curriculum and the power of it it's it's so uh, it was so underestimated and i basically have gone through the the last several years of my life like learning about it and i'm so fascinated with it and how powerful it is uh so there are a hundred trillion microorganisms that live in the gut in a sort of a symbiotic relationship and they actually carry out so many different roles and influence the body in so many different ways that we didn't know. We used to think the GI tract is just this lumen, tortuous lumen, and food goes in there. It gets digested by the enzymes that come from the pancreas, which like there's about 17 of them, whatever. And it goes through the tube and then it goes through the colon. The colon is virtually useless. It's just like a container for stool, passage of stool. That's all we, we, we knew. Now we understand that the majority of digestion and um, uh, regulations occur due to these 100 trillion organisms that live in the gut. And it is so important to respect the health of the, these gut microbiome because they, they're very dynamic. And there isn't a finite number of them. Uh, so you're born with like sort of a sterile GI tract, but as soon as you're going through the vaginal tract, you start colonizing your GI tract with the gut microbiome. And then once you're born, you start breastfeeding, you, you get more organisms in your gut. So you start um, inoculating the gut. As, as, as soon as you're born, going through the vaginal tract, you start like building the gut microbiome. And there is basically, they're so dynamic, they change daily based on your diet, right? That's what's really daily, cool. wow. Yeah, daily with your diet. So for example, if you decided to eat a hamburger with French fries, so whatever it's called, the, like the Angus beef, whatever it is, with some mayonnaise and have like, French fries on top of that, and then you know, drink a soda. Within a short period of time, the gut microbiome will change because you got so much saturated fat, right? Within hours, the gut microbiome is going to shift towards an unhealthy gut microbiome. 
Wow. Which causes from a, one meal. From one meal. Wow. One meal. Okay. On the other hand, let's say you decide you want to have a fiber rich meal. I don't know, maybe you decided you want to have, eat like Dr. Angie, legumes and brown rice and potatoes and colorful vegetables, a plate full of plants. Within hours, you will have a whole different gut microbiome. So if you were to feed me um, a beef burger with French fries, which you won't be able to, but I'm just saying, if you were able to convince me to eat that, and you tested my, my, my gut, gut microbiome, it would be way different than if you fed me a plate of salad and tested my gut microbiome. Completely different, okay? So every meal can help you or hurt you. What do you think about, so you mentioned legumes, which I know are super healthy, and I try to eat them every day. And what do you think about people who go vegan and then they say, I don't feel good, my digestion is terrible, I can't do it anymore, I'm switching to like one of those crazy <laughs> lifestyles that are promoted right now. And maybe part of it is digestion and you know eating legumes. So what, what are your thoughts on that and what can people do? If they feel right, I feel bad for them because they do have a pretty screwed up digestive system. They're, they don't have an unhealthy digestive system. So if you take fiber rich foods, if you eat, if you decide that you're gonna go vegan and you go overnight, it's, it could be a problem if you didn't have a good digestive system to begin with. When I went plant-based, I was vegetarian for a while. Then I like I flipped the switch finally, but it was a slow process, right? Like, you know, and but and even before that, I was eating tons of vegetables and fruits. For people who eat McDonald's every day and they decide, oh, as of tomorrow, I'm going to go vegan, they may have a problem, and I feel bad for them. They don't have the correct machinery to break down these foods. They don't have the digestive capacity to break down these foods. The, most of the macronutrients, so when you think about food, most people think of food as macros, right? It drives me crazy because they have simplified it to fats, proteins, and carbs. Oh my God. Counting them and obsessing over how many of each to get, right? Right. They obsess over all these, the three macros. And there's like so much more to food than just the three macros. There are hundreds of thousands of micronutrients they're not thinking about. So our digestive enzymes that come from the pancreas are well equipped to break down the macronutrients, the carbs, the um, proteins, and the fats. But there are hundreds of thousands of micronutrients that come from food that are broken down by the gut microbiome, okay? And the pancreas enzymes, like lipase, chymotrypsin, all of those pancreatic digestive enzymes, which the lay people call them, all these digestive enzymes don't even touch the micronutrients. It's all up to the gut microbiome to break down the micronutrients. So... So if you think about how complex and complicated the digestive process is, you'll realize that most of digestion occurs with these little guys, these little gut microbiome that are living in a symbiotic relationship with you, not by the enzymes that come from the pancreas. If you understand that, then you realize that if you've been eating the standard American diet full of saturated fat, cholesterol, animal protein, you've been nourishing, you haven't been nourishing your gut, right? You've been eating badly, so you don't have the good gut microbiome that breaks down these micronutrients. So what happens when you decide to flip the switch overnight and start eating vegetables? Well, you haven't been eating vegetables all your life. Your gut doesn't know how to break it down. And so what happens? You get bloated and gassy. And don't give up. Just because you're having it, it just means your machinery is, is not properly working. But don't blame the diet, right, on that. Precisely. Precisely. Exactly. Yeah. Blame your own diet because, you know, you haven't been, you know, eating enough fiber. And so you're not well equipped. Don't blame the vegan diet because it doesn't cause bloating. Uh, it doesn't cause digestive problems. It's just unmasking a big problem that was already there.